Coopers are just built different. It's attitude, the swagger, the style. New York City basketball players have a grit that you will not find in any city in this country. New York drives the basketball culture. This place right here, you can't be weak. These are the roughest basketball players I've ever met in my life. I think a lot of the best hoopers are from New York because they're forced to grow up quick. They're a lot more advanced than every other hooper. When it comes to women's hoops, New York is legendary. You think about Christ the King, you think about Rose Classic, West Forth, Dykeman, Rucker Park. All the basketball legends, especially women's hoopers, have all played there and all made a name for themselves. I can tell you one thing, if you're a female, this is the place where you take your game to the next level. What's good? We in New York with it. You already know. Man, so we're in the Mecca where it's all started. And I feel like people would not watch the show if we didn't go to New York. You got to stop in New York. You know, they love, they would die for the game. Everywhere we go, people are hooping. You know, last night I went for a walk, they were hooping at 2, 3 in the morning. This is why we came to New York City. Basketball lives here. Yeah, New York is the one place where women's basketball has always been at the forefront, right? I love the city, I love the people, but I hate playing against New York Hoopers. Same they here. are, they, they're the best, but the worst, they right? They rip it's your the, clothes off. It's the put you on an island, one-on-one, <laughs> right. -on -one, going at you, showing out all of that. Right, but that's what makes them great. That's why they have the best female Hoopers, because the female Hoopers have the same grit as the guys. The female Hoopers have been on the court with guys, and they have that mentality that they're not backing down from anybody. And that's why New York, they're considered like the mecca for female hoops. New York has so many different options for women basketball players just to play in, from West Sport to Hoop York City, powerhouses like Christ the King, one of the first places to get sponsorships, to really invest in women's sports, which was unheard of back then. And that's exactly why I wanted to make this episode all about women's basketball. Absolutely, there's no way we can come to New York, talk about the Queens, and not start in Queens, New York. When I think of girls basketball, to me, Christ the King is a powerhouse. So if you come to New York City, you have to come to Christ the King. This is kind of the mecca of girls high school basketball in New York City. My name is Bob Mackey, and I'm a teacher. I'm also the girls basketball coach at Christ the King High School. We've had teams come in from out of city, out of state, and they just want to walk around and look like, oh my God, so this is where Sue Bird played. This is where Tina Charles played. We're not Rucker Park, we're not Madison Square Garden, but in girls basketball, this has kind of been the proving ground for a lot of young ladies who've gone on and had great careers. Why do you think all those guys choose to play at Christ the King? If you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. And that's just a fact. New York City's tough, it's a tough town, it's a big city, it's got a fast pace. If you walk slow, you're gonna get run over. And the girls' basketball game's the same way, it's a fast paced game, it moves, it goes. Every kid that comes out of here should come out with a work ethic that's going to make them successful. It's not all about you, you're about the program. And I've been lucky, I've had some great kids. Sue, Tina, they're exceptional. Shamiqua, Exceptional, my God. I've had a courtside seat for watching a whole bunch of young women grow up. And it's remarkable. It's been legendary, but I think what I was always trying to figure out is why did you choose the girls' side? I was a boys' coach in the Bronx, and I was out here to visit. 11 o'clock that morning, they let a science teacher go, and I got a job. But I wasn't gonna coach, and a couple of girls really pushed hard. I like, come on, come in, coach us, coach us. And I said, yeah, you know, okay, what the heck, let's do this. I stuck with it, and I don't regret it. Why didn't you ever go back to the boys' side? Like, why did you decide to stay with the girls? Wow. 
There's a question I've not been asked. They're great to coach. And they've been family. It's still fun, it's still enjoyable. Has it gotten harder? Yes, it really has. The coaching profession, I think, has gotten a lot more difficult. Social media changed the dynamic of everything we do. Everything that gets said now is amplified. And I don't know if the game was really ready for that at the time. That's the problem now as we move forward. A lot of people don't want to accept a role. They don't want that. They want instant, add water. I'm like, no, 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 you got to work for it because it takes a total commitment to do what we do. And it's not for everybody because you've got to love putting the time in and putting the work in. If you don't love that, basketball is not your game in New York City. I wasn't the most talented, I wasn't the most skilled, but I was the toughest one on the court. New York is really what helped me get there. I'm Steph Dolson, and all I do is win. I feel like you've won all there is to win in basketball. A WNBA championship, EuroLeague championship, Hungarian championship, a gold medalist. What else is there for you? What are your other goals? To win another championship, I guess. <laughs> We've been to Atlanta, we've been to D.C., but we knew we had to stop in New York because we consider this the mecca. Why New York? The energy, the community, the amount of people that are here, they just bring that excitement to anything that they do. They always have a chip on their shoulder, and I think that's something that we bring to the court every day. The toughness, it's a whole different level of basketball that I love, it's so much fun. I feel like that really encompasses New York. People that are from New York, it's like a jack of all trades. And even when you think about your skill set and preparing yourself, how do you think being a New York Hooper helped you to do that? It's what made me able to do it. It was just like so competitive. That's the best part about New York is it starts really young. You know, you got kids playing when I walk down the street outside and they're just like hitting each other, knocking them down on the floor playing basketball. So then they grow up and they're just these tough basketball players. That's what stands out when it comes to the type of basketball that we play here. It's just different from anywhere else. And Chris and I talked about it too, but to me, that's what New York basketball is. You have to have it's thick just, skin. I learned that really, really yeah, quick. My yeah. first workout in New York, I was, I cried. Okay. I went in my car with my dad. Yeah. I was like, dad, I can't do this. Yeah. He was like, you're good. Like, yeah. you're fine. And then I came back and I never, I mean, I cried again. But that was, <laughs> that, that was at UConn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I never cried again. You know what I mean? Like, like you said, you just grow that tough skin and you get knocked down, you just get right, back, right up. back up. And I think that is grown in New York. I am the founder of Hoop York City. It's a women's basketball community here in New York. I'm Alex Taylor, and I'm a blueprint to change the game. You're doing great things in New York City. Inner city, I've never even heard of a community like this before. I just really wanted a way to get back in the game, make friends. Representation in community is so important to me, especially in a big city like this. And most importantly, it's inspiring younger girls to know yeah. that they belong. Yeah. And, and we need more of that right now. I think we're so far away from having women feel comfortable enough to just hit a court. I used to wake up at 6 a.m. just to go get shots up because I could not get on the court. And if I did, I was judged in some way, you know, based on just being a woman. We are not at a point where society has fully accepted women's basketball. That, to me, is always the goal. I am Camille Buxeda, and I'm an amplifier of women's basketball culture. Slam has always been marrying basketball and culture and celebrating basketball culture. And so, like, when it comes to the women of the game, like, they've got that and more, right? And that's exactly where we've run with it. How have you been able to push forward and get more women on the cover of Slam? 
the women, they're so much more dynamic, right? They have so much more outside of what they provide on the court, From right? overseas to motherhood to... Everything. And leagues are so unwilling to invest on the women's side when I'm like, why don't you want two cash cows, not just one? I think the men's and women's game is so different. And to put men and women on the court, it's going to be pulling in different directions. No shade. Men will, like, stop the game to argue about know, points and fouls yeah. and all this shit. Crazy. And we don't do that. Yeah. You know, the women's game is just different. We're out there to have fun. We're out there to be together and, and build camaraderie. That's a great mindset to have. Like, just relax. Yeah. Just play some basketball, yeah. enjoy the game, and have fun with your friends. The reason why I do this is so much about the women that I've met. We have the strongest friendships that I've ever had. Coming together through sports, that's what I really wanted to recreate with New York City, and I feel like I have. How were you able to build a community via Women's Slam? It's those moments like Slam Summer Classic where we get to invite these girls and really celebrate them like celebrities because they don't get that type of treatment like the boys do even in high school now. And how has New York really put you in the position that you are in now? There's such a symbiotic relationship to what New York is to the game of basketball. The hustle, the grind, pounding of the concrete. You're looking where you're going, but you've got a goal in mind. New York has more of the tie to the game of basketball in itself as a city than any other place that I've seen. It's the place where people, you know, want to show out when they come hoop. New York is where the lights come on. It's Broadway, it's Queens, it's Brooklyn, it's the Bronx. Without basketball, there is no New York. Without New York, there is no basketball. They just go hand in hand. The best basketball in the country is found in Queens, New York. This is where it starts, this is where it ends. If you're looking for great girls high school basketball, you're gonna come to Queens. If you're a hoop head, you are a hoop head and you follow women's basketball. These players do not give up. They won't quit because that's what New York's all about. It's about hard work. It was my place when I found basketball where I was able to be myself and be true to who I am. That's Hoop York City. It's New York City. It's the place you gotta be. New York, you know the vibes. New York City, baby.